I about forgot to make a video today. I'm halfway through putting up more signs this morning, and I'm like, have I recorded anything yet? I hadn't. Morning. Anyway, I'm working on finishing up my plot signs. I've got a few more to get put up here yet. I'm trying to do it before it gets super hot today. The framers are there working on the house, so that's good. And uh, we might go to Berkey later today. See if we can't do a little spraying. I've got some beans I would like to spray um, with some fungicide. I want to do that early shot of fungicide. I thought maybe I'd do a field down there. Um, but I don't know if it's too wet or not, so we'll have to go check on that. We might work on the bean head a little bit more later. We got plenty going on. Okay, finally, all of the signs are up. I still need to print the uh, labels as to what the agronomic trials are out here, but they're there. High speed fly by, go. Okay, I've got some spraying that I want to do on some beans down to Berkey. Some uh, early fungicide. We're going to do a second shot of fungicide on a little bit. And I've got this uh, Strike. So one of them foliar feed egg explore products. We're going to try some. I've got enough for 50 acres there. I've got a little bit more to do some up here. Um, problem is my fungicide is in this bulk shuttle. And uh, I need five gallons. Five. There's 175 in here. But it looks like it's separated out a little bit, so we got to agitate it and get it all mixed up before I take anything out of there. Which could prove to be a little bit more difficult. So we need to get a chemical pump on there, but I need to dig that shuttle out and we're going to set it outside, I think, because... Well, we'll be using it fairly soon. Well, it might be a month yet, I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't set it outside. I don't know. i got to dig it out, though. Alright, I need a chemical pump to agitate that tank and to get some out of there. And I got that one on the boron shuttle, but Dad stole the meter off of it because he had trouble with the meters on this pump that he was using for Roundup, and I'm stealing it back. Okay, I changed my plan just a little bit because I was looking around and I found out that, oh yeah, I have some Quadris left. Quadris is the fungicide I bought for doing early corn applications, and um, I saved enough for about 160 acres uh, to do on some beans. So that one jug will do my 50 acres that I wanted to do and I don't actually need anything out of there right now. Whoops. Okay, I've loaded up what I needed and a few signs. I've got a bunch of signs down to Berkey already. Um, so I'm not taking very many. But uh, we're gonna go down there and take a look at the fields. We'll see if uh, it's dry enough to spray. If it is, we'll run a couple of loads. I got one of that strike and one of the fungicide. I'm going to do them in different places so that I can compare them instead of tank mixing them. Uh, maybe we'll throw a few signs up and we'll come back. When we get back, we're going to go check our weed across the road. Well, I made it down here. Let's check out our beans and the ground conditions. It's um, dry on top. Looks dry enough to spray to me. We'll get out here a little bit. Beans look pretty good. There, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So you can see the new growth since Dad sprayed them. We had some herbicide damage. That's the speckling here. And all of these new leaves here have come out and uh, made them look better. I don't know if that's all herbicide damage or some hail. Looks like herbicide more than, but the broken leaves makes me think maybe we had a little hail here. I don't know. It's possible. The volunteer corn is dying. That is good. Yeah, overall, they look pretty good. Uh-huh, I'm quite happy with the way these beans look. They're, they've come a long way since I was down here a week ago. Great, and they're, it's time to spray them with this stuff that we've got, so I'm gonna look at the radar. I'm gonna find a sprayer track out here from where Dad was just here. Make sure those tracks look dry enough right here. It's firm. No question, we can spray this. It's not too windy today. This will work. They're working on putting that bike path in over there. That is our cornfield. So this is also our corn. This is where my uh, that little corn plot that we put out is out here. I'm going to go take a look at that. 
for the most part it looks pretty good you can see the end rows we've got some compaction here these ends are always it's just we drive on them too much but out in the field things actually look really good out there this corn is tall it's growing it's got great color to it beautiful looks fantastic now to find that plot okay so i found a stake right there so this is the first entry in the plot it's 99 day corn you can definitely see a difference right here between those two uh just a different leaf type much more upright pointed straight up and down versus this one that kind of flops over i'll have to double check but i believe this is my 110 day corn out here um both you know this is great corn so um We'll see how this 99 day does. Interesting, interesting to see that difference in the plant type. You can see we've got that rapid growth syndrome going on here. We've got a little bit of striping in the leaves. Uh, I did not put any foliars on this stuff. So um, yeah, looks, looks pretty darn good. We'll move on to the next one here. 102 day here, O2K39, a little bit shorter. Uh, doesn't have quite the upright leaf that that one over there does, but again, looks good. I, this is not one of my favorite hybrids. I don't care for it. It doesn't have very good grain quality, so it's in the plot, but not one that I've ever planted much of. Here's another one that's tall and kind of more of that upright pointy leaf. Not as much or just different than the one over there, but similar. We get a little more uneven there. We've got a bit of a hole. This one is tall. Uh, I think this is my 104 day. Oh, this is 103, 03R40. This is a really good grain quality one. This one I like, um, but we'll see how it yields compared to the one right here that is a short hybrid. This is just one of the shortest corns we have, uh, 04G36, but it won my plot last year at Waldron and it was second at Berkey here, I think. So this has been excellent, excellent corn. It's just a much shorter hybrid than especially that one 105 day here that I hear very good things about but don't it doesn't look great right here for whatever reason I don't know and then this one this one is very tall what the heck is this number is this 107 I had right there yep 07 G 73 this is brand new I don't know anything about it but it's tall I can tell you that wow looks good up to 108 day here, 08R52, which this corn has yielded pretty well, but it's really wet in the fall. It seems more like a 110 or 12 day corn to me, so I don't know. I haven't planted a ton of that. And then I'm guessing this one is probably 110 day, 10D21. Um, this is my high population, high yield environment, 110 day. And then we should have 10L16 right here which is my lower population, but still really good yield. Just can't push it as hard 110 day. And I believe that is what's in the rest of the field as well. And that should be the end of the plot, pretty sure. It is a little softer here than the bean field was. If I was spraying corn, I don't know that I would try it. Although the wheel tracks where we've already driven are gonna be pretty firm. Um, I'm gonna go over and look at the other bean field that I was hoping to do some in today see if that one looks dry enough if it does we'll probably spray the beans so that that job is done and we can get the sprayer moved when we need to wow these fields look so much better now that the volunteer corn is gone <laughs> dead and the beans have grown up around it this is the exact same spot i showed you last week where we had all that volunteer corn out here and right there is the woods remember i was talking about how the wind sheltered the corn last year and it didn't go down as bad so we didn't have as much volunteer right there um, but this side here, it was pretty thick and it's, it's gone See, right there. Dead volunteer corn. Um, beans look good. We've got flowers. We've got a lot of flowers. So I would call these R1 beans. I don't, I wouldn't call them full bloom yet. Beginning bloom, but we're between R1 and R2. And, um, I think it's dry enough. I think we can spray. So. We're gonna go mix up a batch of fungicide, spray it on that first field that we were on, and then we'll mix up the batch of uh, foliar feed and uh, spray that over here. I'm gonna do some strips in this field. I'm gonna probably do some strips in that field across the road, and we'll see how far we get, maybe a strip or two in that one. Uh, 
as well. Nice, beautiful looking beans. So this uh, field's down here. This ground is um, a little bit more productive than our stuff at Waldron. It's very good ground and it's heavier. It holds moisture better. So we were super dry coming into the spring down here and last year, but we've gotten a lot of rain. We had, you know, 1.6 over the weekend. We've had more than that down here. We've just, we've gotten more here than we have at Waldron. And it, it should carry these beans for quite a while. Um, I think three or four years ago, we had beans in this field right here. Then it went 80 bushel to the acre. It's very good ground. So I'm hoping for something similar this year. And if we throw a little bit of fungicide and protectant and stuff on them, that maybe we can do better than that. I don't know. Okay, I got the pump hooked up, hoses. We got full tanks of water because it's rained. And I've got my chemicals all here. We're gonna start with the fungicide, which means we just need that basically. And uh, we need a sprayer. It's sitting over here somewhere, over there. Okay, first load, fungicide, the Quadrus. We need uh, 800 gallons. We're gonna spray 53.3 acres at 15 gallons to the acre. So right on 800. And we just need that one jug. I brought some boron from that boron shuttle that I used uh, in my starter this spring. I think I'm gonna, I got four jugs of it. I think I'm gonna throw one or two of those in on each load and kind of do a split side by side, you know, with the, the quadrus by itself and then the quadrus plus the boron um, to see if that makes any difference or not. This pump has seen better days. I have to hold the throttle or it'll idle down. And it's a little easy. Oh well, two loads, I already got 500, we're fine. All right, making sure I got the monitor set up right, water. Quadra, six ounces to the acre, 15 gallons of water. Well, 14 gallons and 122 ounces. All right, we'll get the field set up when we get there. Good to go. I am glad to have found a job to do in the air conditioning for a little while. Okay, I made it to the first field here and uh, I was just unfolding the boom and ready to go and then I looked at the nozzles and yeah, Dad switched the nozzles for the herbicide so we've got to switch them back. So with the herbicide, a lot of times you're worried about drift a lot more and you want to um, use uses these AI tips, air induction, and they produce bigger droplets so that it doesn't drift. We want these twin jets for coverage because we're spraying a fungicide. Okay, got it, and we're spraying. It's weird, Phil planted the beans on a little bit of an angle, like that's straight. Our sprayer tracks are straight, and the beans are on an angle, so we're kind of driving crossroads, which is fine, because you're instead of running one road down all the way across the field, you're just crossing them a little bit. It's really for harvest, because it'll be a lot easier to harvest them. Uh, we like going on an angle, they cut better. But uh, yeah, spraying. So again, we're doing strips through the middle of the field. I did not start on the edge and I did not go around the outside. We're not spraying this whole field. I've only got enough to do 53 acres and there's 78 in this field. So we don't need to do it all. Um, it's for comparison purposes, right? That's This is a early shot of fungicide, something we have never done before. We will come back and spray these beans again, probably the last week of July at R3 timing. Um, with a fungicide, we're gonna do all of our beans. I'm experimenting with a small amount of acres of giving it that second application to see if it helps. So that's why we're, we're doing it this way. Um, I, again, right or wrong, I don't know, but that's why we're trying it. So I brought half of my boron, it's in those two jugs there. When we get down to 300 gallons left, we're gonna stop and dump it in. So then that's all just fungicide only, and then what I finish up with here will be the fungicide plus the boron. Okay, that field's done. Back to load up and do our um, foliar strike stuff. Okay, so we're putting this foliar in this strike, and the use rate is quite a bit higher at uh, two quarts or a half a gallon per acre. So we're putting enough for 50 acres in, which is 25 gallons of product. It is a 4018 
with 12% sulfur, so 4% nitrogen, which beans don't really need nitrogen. Um, 18% potassium, potash, which is good. That's what we're using it for because I think the liquid potassium uh, has some merit, especially on beans. And then 12% sulfur, which I think is also good. So, the fact that we use a half a gallon per acre instead of a quart or eight ounces like some of the other stuff means that maybe it, there's enough there to make a difference. I don't really know. It takes a long time in jugs to get it all in there. So, um, if we do any of this on a large scale in the future, we're going to use it with bulk shuttles, I can tell you that. Because that's too much handling of jugs. 750. Yeah, we're good. Okay, so I'm to the fields we're going to spray here. We're going to do some strips in three different fields. Uh, there is a line of showers popping to the north, but it's moving northeast. I think we're clear here for at least a little while. Um, it would be nice if this stuff would dry. The longer the better, but at least an hour until it rains on it, ideally. I think we've got that, so um, we'll be okay. These nice big square open fields sure are more fun to spray. Flat, you don't have to worry about the boom hitting the ground, just go. This is fun. All right, we're, uh, now we're down to 420, three gallons left. When we get down to 300, we'll dump that boron in this. Same thing, different product mix with the strike and the boron than the quadrus and the boron, but still should be good side-by-side -side data. All right, I'm down to enough for 10 or 11 acres here. This is the last field we're gonna do, a couple rounds, whatever it takes to use it up. Uh, but we gotta get done, because the wind is starting to pick up on us. And that is no good, although we're spraying a foliar fertilizer. It's not something that's going to cause any issues with drift problems. Um, if I was spraying dicamba, I would have quit by now, but we're not spraying that. Anything volatile or like that, and uh, we're not really close to any I mean, that house there is the one that is the closest to anything that would be of concern, and we should be plenty far away from that, so we're good. Okay, well, one round is all we got there anyway. It says 78 acres done, but that's including what Dad sprayed when he did the herbicide pass, and there's like 67 in the field, so we did about 10, 11. All right, well, we're done down here. Uh, like I said, I've got a little bit more of this uh, strike, this foliar that we just finished spraying. Uh, my plan is to use it on the field of beans that we have up to Waldron that I can and intend to irrigate if need be later in the summer. Sorry, tree blocking the road here. Um, so we'll see uh, when we can get the sprayer back to Waldron to get that sprayed. But hopefully the end of this week or next week, although next week we'll probably be busy with wheat harvest and now I'll get to it when I get to it. Okay, well, I've been thinking about doing this for a week, so I'm glad to get this out of the way. Um, I'm going to take my truck back right now. We're not going to take the sprayer, but we can come down here and get the sprayer whenever we get a chance. Maybe tomorrow. I don't know. Rock's coming tomorrow. I'm planning on doing that bean head tomorrow. It's supposed to be a little bit cooler, so it won't be quite so miserable working out there, but we'll see. The other thing we need is that tractor could come back to Walden. It's been sitting there for a long time, and uh, it'd be nice to have back around. We're gonna need it later this summer, so maybe three of us will come down and drive the sprayer and the tractor back. I had thought about putting some field signs up down here, but it's after three o'clock. I feel like I need to get back to Waldron, try and get something done there, and it did get kind of windy here, and it might rain, and I don't really want to do it right now, so we'll do it some other time. I don't think you guys can see it, but about two miles north of here, it is absolutely pouring right now. You can see the wall of water. And now it's pouring here. We're a long ways from where we sprayed though, so I don't think it's raining there. Well, it would appear we had enough rain here for it to drip off the roof and get that spot on the concrete wet. But nothing else is wet, although it looks like it's raining over there, and it's definitely raining over there, and we drove past or through a bunch of rain between here and over there, so I don't know. It's a good thing we got that inch and a quarter over the weekend, otherwise I'd start be starting to get frustrated that we keep missing all these rains, but we're good. I didn't want it to rain every day. So there's still a pretty good chance, let's see, today's Wednesday through, I think, Thursday or Saturday, or no. Friday or Saturday, uh, for it to rain some more. 
I wouldn't mind catching a half inch out of one of those. Otherwise, it might start getting dry on us. Let's go check out how the house is coming today. They're gone. Well, check it out. We have got some walls. They are just about done with the walls, in fact. So first thing they did this morning was put this safety rail up. They needed this wall to anchor stuff to. Um, but anyway, so that's there. So this side of the house is basically done except for this wall right here. That's the back of them, that closet, those closets. Um, so we've got a doorway right here, short little hallway uh, to the boys' rooms. One closet, another one, big closet there. And then back over here, we've got a doorway into a bathroom, tub, shower, toilet, dual vanities, storage closet. We have another bedroom here, bathroom, small walk-in closet. So that's the, the kids' wing, I guess. This is all living room. We'll have 11 foot ceilings in the living room, big windows on either side of the fireplace there. That's the patio sliding doors, kitchen area in here. This is just huge across the middle here, and it looks great. Then we've got the little entryway to our master. There's going to be a desk here for bills and papers and stuff, so they're not sitting out in the kitchen, and they're kind of hidden there. Master bedroom, and then the hallway to the master bathroom, dual closets. Uh, it's easier to go this way. Master bathroom, that'll be shower, toilet room, sinks, makeup counter in front of that window. And then this is into the laundry room. Washer and dryer will sit here. Back over to garage entryway. There's a couple of walls they're doing here yet around our pantry. And then there'll be a doorway right here back into the kitchen. And then there's a little half bath right here. So cool i like it i like it a lot a couple of little minor things that that i may ask my wife about and may modify um i need to do some measuring but that window looks high i wonder if we shouldn't drop it a little bit or maybe get a taller window i don't know and then uh, there's one spot over here this one closet is awfully big which is not a bad thing it's not uh deep enough to be a walk-in this closet here but I almost wonder if instead of that being all closet into this bedroom, we shouldn't put a door here with a little little a wall in a closet for games and linens and that kind of storage stuff. Or maybe even just cabinet, built-in cabinetry there or something that's only two foot deep or something like that. It would be a change, but it's easier to change it now than it is after they put the drywall and everything else up. So... I don't know. I need to have Maddie come and take a look at stuff. Anyway, Phil called me. He's taking a semi in to have some work done to it. I don't know what, I don't know. I don't remember what he told me they need to do, but I gotta go pick him up. Well, there might be some rain coming here yet. We missed, this is the line we saw when we were spraying. We missed all of that. And then a little bit may have popped up and hit us in Berkey there. I think the rain gauge said like a 10th or or not a tenth, a hundredth or two. But we've missed it here. Now there's another line forming to the west that may get here, it may not. Who knows? Okay, a quick break to sit at my computer and charge my phone because it was gonna die. Let's walk across the road here and take a look at our wheat field. It hasn't rained here yet today, so it's not wet to walk out there. And, um, I'm just curious to see how crunchy the kernels are, how dry it feels. I don't think it's dry enough to warrant taking an actual sample yet. But it'll give us an idea where we're at. It seems rather dark, and I don't know if that's some disease. Yeah, it's clearly some disease. Could be varietal a little bit. Um, this all got sprayed with a fungicide, so um, it's a good thing that we did it because it appears that our... Uh, disease pressure is fairly high it's pretty tall wheat waist high on me here we've got some spots that are going down a little bit but what you'll notice looking at the heads see how some of them are kind of kinked over like this not standing straight up anymore they're they're bending over 
that always happens when it's you know basically reached maturity and that's how we can tell that it's basically pretty much ready to combine they're not all kinked over yet there's still some spots that aren't quite so another day or two especially these hot days that we've been getting we get some sunshine we'll dry this down you can see these heads got some black on it that's definitely some disease interesting we're gonna need to go over and walk that stuff that we flew yesterday see how much different that looks they're not all as bad as I mean this one doesn't look so bad maybe it's just the angle I don't know some of them look worse than others all right let's uh, pick one and try and get some kernels out of there okay some of those kernels are a little dark they don't look terrible pretty good sized actually they look pretty dry let's crunch one yeah that's dry Fourteen, fifteen. did I drool all over myself wow Brock we gotta get the combine ready to go time to combine wheat tomorrow I'm tempted we'll see what happens with this rain that's over there tonight if we don't get any or much and the sun's out tomorrow like it has been, we might get the combine out tomorrow afternoon. I doubt it, but I'm not ruling it out. This is the field I flew with the drone yesterday. Right there is the fungicide line. Drastic difference. All right, sorry, Dad and I were doing a little field evaluating there. We went over to that field that I flew yesterday to see what that check strip looked like versus the stuff that got sprayed. And the fungicide that we used there is different than the fungicide we used right here across the road um, where I was that first field. And so I wanted to kind of compare them. And we've definitely got some dark heads there. Uh, I'm not sure what the disease is. I don't know if it's Fusarium head blight or some other smut or gloom. So I don't know and so it'll be very interesting to watch the yield maps to see if they correlate and <laughs> I'm also interested to see how the fungicide we put here compares to the fungicide over there there's also a maturity difference this wheat's dang near ready to combine that other field was still pretty soft green especially where we sprayed so that could be part of the difference that we're seeing too is maturity and not so much health but definitely some noticeable differences you know yield trumps all but this is where we've got to go out and evaluate the products that we're using and see it before we harvest it otherwise once once we harvest the evidence is gone and all you got is a yield map so um plant health is important and oh my gator's rolling away and that was a good thing to go and see good thing i parked that like i did and it didn't roll back into my wife's car Ooh, that was a bad Yum. it would appear that this storm is gonna split us too and we're gonna miss it. Which again, at the moment, isn't a terrible thing, but we can't keep missing them all summer. All right, well, we showed the mama and the boys the Hi. house. Hi. And uh, yeah. I think it's all good. Looks good to me. I also put the front wall on the garage here. So we gotta go back to the farm. It's sprinkling a little bit, but wait, this isn't gonna amount to anything for us, so. Uh, go back to the farm and head home. Okay, thanks for watching today, everybody. We are headed home. Are you gonna say bye? No. No, they're being grumpy because I wouldn't give them fruit snacks after they had brownies with whipped cream on them at Grandma's house. <sighs> anyway, I'm glad to get that spraying done. I think it'll be fine. We we missed the rain down there for the most part and may get some here later, but um, it'll be good. So we'll see what tomorrow brings weather-wise. We have not gotten enough rain to really affect much. Again, chances of rain tomorrow, so we'll see. But if it's sunny, we may take the combine to the field. I don't know yet. Um, but that wheat across the road is it's ready. Which is good. Which means tomorrow morning we're getting combine ready. Uh, we got to do that um, seat sensor. Hopefully that solves our problem. I'm not 100% convinced it will, but hopefully it does. 
and we need to finish the bean head and get the chafer thrown into it. And then we're going to have to hook up the grain cart because that we're going to need too. So that's tomorrow's plan. Thanks for watching. Have a great night. We'll see you tomorrow.